condensing the logarithms. So if we have more than one logarithm um, separated by addition, this whole expression is A. This whole expression is B. Okay, So I know it kind of gets a little bit confusing because technically when we did this, we just had numbers there, right? It was like log of 8 plus log of x. And you're like, OK, that's log of 8 times x. Well, now the, exp the values are actually expressions separated by addition and subtraction. But that doesn't change what the rules of logarithms tell us to do. And then here, I can use the power rule. I can put that up top. OK? Does everybody understand what I did? Yeah. Everybody OK with that? Yeah. All right. So now, um, the next thing is, hopefully you guys see that now I have a logarithm equal to another logarithm. Since they're both ln, we know that the base is going to be e. So now I can just separate, set this left side. equal to the right side. And then obviously, I can go ahead and do my math here. Um, when using FOIL, I get 3x squared. Um, that's going to be minus 3x, so minus 5x plus 2 equals x squared. Now, obviously, I will need to solve for x. I notice that this is a quadratic. I remember from Algebra 2, when I want to solve for quadratics, I want to set it equal to 0 and solve it. So a lot of you guys uh, did a very good job. You tried to see if it was factorable um, when you had the wrong equation. And once you knew that it was not factorable, you immediately went to the quadratic formula, which is exactly the process I would ask you to follow. Um, because not every quadratic is going to be factorable, right? You're, that's why we have the quadratic formula to help us out. However, um, how the actual real equation is um, presented actually is factorable. We could have this as. Um, 2x minus 2, or no, minus 1, and 2x minus 2 equals 0. I think that worked. No, there's something wrong. What did I factor this wrong? It's x minus 2, that's right. Yes, there we go. OK, now the reason why we like factoring is because now we can apply the zero product property. So I can say 2x minus 1 equals 0, and x minus 2 equals 0. Therefore, x equals 1 half, and x equals positive 2. Now, here's one thing I didn't talk about in the last problem. Because a lot of times this doesn't really come up, but it is very important for us to um, take a look at, uh, take a look at um, the solutions that we have for a logarithm. Ladies and gentlemen, when we talked about an exponential graph, it looks something like this. Was there any ever any restrictions on our domain? Domain's all real numbers, right? All real numbers. Don't even have to worry about it. However, when we look at a logarithm, we have restrictions on our domain, right? The domain is nothing to the to left of that asymptote, right? There's no negative numbers in our domain, correct? Now, you might think about this and say, oh, well, we're good, right? We have two positive numbers, so we're good. But you don't know what transformations actually occur in this graph at all. So what we need to do is to make sure our answers fit the domain. For instance, if you guys, if you guys remember this, um, what did we do here? You know, x plus 3, 2x. If I said, here's an equation. Right? We know what answers are not a part of the domain, right? The answer that makes the denominator 0 is not a part of our domain, correct? Well, the same thing goes for a logarithm. We have restrictions on our domain. Based on the graph, we know that negative numbers are not a part of our domain. So what I want you guys to do is take your solutions and plug them back into x and for your logarithms. If you have to take the log of a negative number, you know that is not a solution. So if I plug in 2, 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 2 is 4. So that's fine. 2 minus 1 is 2. And then this would be 2. So are these, I'm taking my solution and plugging them in for x. Do you guys see, uh, Megan, when I do that, I, get a, I can evaluate for each logarithm. Now watch. 
when I do 1 half, even though 1 half is positive. When I do 1 half, 3 times 1 half is 3 halves, which is 1.5. 1 1.5 minus 2 is <coughs> negative 1 half, or negative 0.5. Can you take the logarithm of a negative number? No. So guess what? This is not a solution. So even though algebraically we found it to be a solution, that is our only solution of this equation. Okay. So make sure you guys don't find fault and just say, oh, I got my solutions, and then just be good with it. Make sure you have to go back and check your solutions to make sure they're not going to be extraneous. All right.